Oh, oh yeah. We are already having so much fun and I'm only an eighth of the way around the lake, maybe. It's gonna be a fun video, folks. Strap in. So one thing I've always wanted to do is fish every single dock in a lake. Now on some lakes, that would be really stinking easy. Some lakes have like five docks. But in today's video, I picked a lake where that actually is possible. I don't know exactly how many docks are out here, maybe 120. And the reason I picked this lake today is for two reasons. One, I've never been here before. I didn't want any prior experience. I don't want no knowledge. All I wanna know is there docks, is there bass in the lake? Then there's probably bass around the docks. And reason number two is because most of the docks are pretty spread out. So it's actually gonna be a challenge on my equipment, my batteries to get all the way around the boat with my trolling motor, which is why today's video is brought to you by Pro Guide Batteries. We'll talk about them after the first fish catch. Chesty on in three, two, one, and we are ready to go. But the first thing I'm noticing conditions wise is that we have a ton of aquatic vegetation in this lake. You can see we got some, what looks like coontail. And I got that coontail from casting underneath the dock. So obviously we're not gonna have probably a whole lot of clean docks, maybe in this area. And what I mean by clean is that the, the surface underneath is not sand or rock or shell. It is, it is grass, it is mud. And that's usually not what bass like to hang around. They've got all this grass out here in open water. Why would they be in the grass underneath the dock? So I like to find the cleanest docks that I can. Looks like we have a little bit of an algae bloom in the water. And so that's gonna decrease the water clarity, make it a little bit harder for the fish to find out where my lure is, but also makes it a little bit easier because I can actually get closer to the docks without the fish knowing that I'm there. I'm gonna be alternating between a topwater frog, good for skipping, this one here is the striking pad perch, and a skipping jig, this is the outcast tackle cage fighter jig. All the tackle that I use is linked in the video description. Enough chit chat though, let's catch a fish. There's one, there's one. Yes sir, let's go. Man, you're fighting so stinking hard. You're not even that big. Oh my gosh. I mean, you're nice, but you're not like huge. Man, oh man, get in here. Yes, sir. First fish of the day on the jig. And that right there is a really healthy, good quality fish. Probably two and a quarter, two and a half pounds on the cage fighter. Beautiful. Just look at the proportions. So stinking fat and juicy. Thank you, friend. For many years, I used a lead acid battery in the back of my bass boat. And while they work great, they only work great for a short period of time until they start to go bad and you gotta buy a new one a year or two years down the road. And if you wanna make a good investment that will last a long time for your watercraft, you need to check out ProGuide lithium batteries. Our lithium batteries are rated for 2,500 cycles, which means that you can charge and deplete, charge and deplete 2,500 times. That's like, eight to 10 years of continuous fishing. ProGuide is one of the only battery companies in the marine industry to actually design their own lithium battery, not just go to Alibaba and buy one and put their sticker on it. And they are also the only marine battery company that sells all three types, lead acid, AGM, and lithium, all for your bass boat, kayak, or John boat. And the best news is you can use code TRF to save 10% on your lithium batteries. It is expensive, but it's a huge investment that's very important that will last you years and years. Let's get back on the water. Always make a cast back to where you caught a fish, especially under a dock. Sometimes they can group up. Not every time, but sometimes, so it's worth a shot. Oh, what a beautiful skip. I'm proud of that one. See, like a dock like that, that's so tiny. I would ordinarily, oh, I was gonna say I would ordinarily skip over that. And I probably should have because all I caught was a rock bass. I'm not saying you can't catch a big one on a really small dock, but it's just, the, the likelihood is lower. Good morning. Catch them all, I just sold the place. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll leave none for the next guy. If you don't mind me asking, how much you sell for? I do. Oh, you do, got it. Sounds good. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, get in here, Kyle, pull down. Now that right there is a teeny tiny itty bitty one. But that's two fish so far on, on docks that have a lot of shade and what look like cleaner bottom. I can't stress enough how important that is. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not sure if I like this algae bloom. The water usually should be pretty dang clear, but it's uh, it's kind of murky. So I'm gonna keep fishing, I'm gonna keep trying it. I just may have to adjust my tactics a little bit. Well, or not, or keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, you fight so stinking hard. That right there, not an ice cream cone bass. That's a double scoop. I guess every, every bass is technically ice cream scoop, but that's a nice one. 
Okie doke. Can I please prove just one time that there will be multiple bats living under a dock? Can I just prove that once? <sighs> Dang it. Once again, can't prove it. Yes, I can. Oh, oh, bigger one. Bigger one. Oh my gosh. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh my gosh. What a fatty. What a fatty. I can prove it. Just a different part of the dock. Oh my gosh, what a fatty. I'm not gonna boat flip this one. I'm not gonna boat flip this. Wow, wow. Oh my gracious. Look at the propor, I keep saying look at the proportions, but especially with this one. Wow. That thing is gonna go probably almost four pounds and it is thick as a brick. Dang. That's stinking awesome. Holy cow. Jig in the roof of the mouth. Oh my gosh, I just burped. That is, oh my gosh, the jig popped out. I was gonna say that's such an awesome catch. Beautiful, beautiful fish, nothing like it. So not only did I prove finally on camera that there's more fish on each dock than you think, I did it with a 4.21. If y'all don't follow me on Instagram, you should. A lot of fun, real day in the life stuff goes on there that y'all don't see on the YouTube, so. Go check it out. But I'll tell you what I'm really impressed with so far is the fact that this one trailer super glued on here has lasted me four fish and a rock bass. So heck yeah. And this jig I've been using for weeks. We are already having so much fun and I'm only an eighth of the way around the lake, maybe. It's gonna be a fun video, folks. Strap in. Now I would like to catch one on the frog underneath the dock, but I think these tails here are a little bit too long. So I'm going to kind of follow the tails up and trim them to make them a little bit shorter, but I think it'll make it skip better. Oh, dang it. Ah, first bite with the frog and I miss him. Come on. Didn't feel giant, but also didn't feel small. There he is. Got him. Got him. Nice one. I'm assuming this is the same one that bit the frog that I lost a second ago. <laughs> Get in here. Get in here. Let's go. That's a good one. I'm not going to keep track of my best five unless I catch ones that are over three, I think. Gosh, Jake got him in the face. Look at that little Debbie. I guess right there is a, a point, a teaching point of always have a follow-up lure to a topwater bait. Could be a, a jig. For a lot of people, I know it's a Texas rigged worm, usually a stick bait like an Ocho or a Senko. But uh, always have a follow-up because you think if you set the hook and you, and, you, and you hook that fish for one second that he's gone for good, sometimes that's the case and he'll never bite again. But other times you'll be able to uh, get some redemption. And redemption is a sweet, sweet thing. Man, I'm on a roll today. I guess one thing I'll talk about as I work this dock here is the order in which you fish the dock. So the last thing you wanna do is make a super long skip or long cast through a bunch of stuff, get a bite, which is great, that's a good thing, but then drag the fish through the dock, uh, you know, displacing everything in its path and probably scaring or at least making fish weary of biting again. So if there are multiple fish on a dock, you wanna work it from out to in, just like you do lay down trees or any kind of grass patch or lily pad area. So right here, I've got two things, a sea dew dock and a dock for a full-size Lund boat over there. So I'm gonna start by skipping just the sea dew area working that and there there was a fish under there all right that fish does not want to bite anymore so we're going to power pull up or if you're going to kayak or a canoe or whatever just get a little bit closer to the dock and then start working the things that are farther so right here we've got some shallow uh plastic wheels so i'm going to cast up to those i'm going to get a backhand skip underneath well that was not good underneath the front side of the lund boat here work that out oh that felt that's a fish, but he's, there he is. He got me stuck. Get out of there, thank you. Okay, so what I did there is a nice, easy skip and landed the fish without scaring anything else that could be on that dock. Thank you, my friend. Get back in there. So of course, now that I've caught one, I'm gonna make a backhand skip right back to where I got that first bite. See if he's got any buddies. And if not, I'll move on to uh, a different area, which as I troll around the front of the dock would be kind of the middle of the walkway here. So get a good little short flip in there. Again, I'm not gonna do the longest skip I can at the beginning. I wanna kinda hit the edge first. Now that I've done one short one, I'll do a longer one underneath the inside. 
I'm also 100% on not hitting any docks today, so that's good. And then I'm gonna go underneath the boat. So I'm gonna go underneath the prop, short right here. Then if I can, I'm gonna skip underneath the entire boat just like that. Well, nothing there, so I'm gonna work along the back side of this boat here. And I usually kind of like to swim the jig along the sunny side. Occasionally, if there's an opening, I'll flip in there. Now you gotta make sure you don't set the hook too hard, you'll slap the jig on their boat. But no bite, and that right there is how you work a dock effectively. Gee, my skips are so good today. Ooh, dang it. Hey, we're good. Oh gosh, I've got a fish. I've got a stinking, I've got a stinking giant. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Is that what I was like snapping my line for? There's no way. There's no stinking way that's what that was. I think, I, I think that I was stuck legitimately on the dock and a fish came and ate it off the dock. And it's big. I mean, it might be bigger than the first one. Holy cow. Wow. This is nuts. These docks are loaded. Absolutely loaded. Okay, not bigger than the first one, but another stinking good one. Oh my gosh. What a dang thicken. What a thick girl. My gosh. I mean, like, just the absolute chunkiness. I gotta get another Instagram story. Holy cow. Probably just shy of four, I'm guessing. Oh my gosh, I'm so good. 396 is what it locked on. 396, you can't see that, there it is. We are on our way to a 20 pound sack on docks. Let's go. Now I am sure my line is frayed. There's no way. Yeah, yeah, it's frayed. I'm just imagining the scene of a fish having my jig in its mouth and the jig's constantly like pulling out and he's like, why won't you give up? I ate you. Jeepers. Oh, what a fish. Oh, not very big, but holy cow, you fight so stinking hard. You weigh all of like two and a half pounds and you are such a trooper. Gee, sorry for the lighting folks, it's absolutely blown out, but that's the conditions we got today. All right, one fish under there. I had cast the frog there with no luck. So that just goes to show you that fish are not always hungry for everything. Sometimes they want something on the bottom or on the top. Oh my gosh, that was a bad skip and I was reeling it in and this fish came and ate it as I'm like retrieving it to give it another try. Holy cow, that makes me think there's a few fish in here because usually when they have to compete with one another, they show themselves and get the heck out of there after they've eaten. So I'm guessing I'll catch a few more on this duck. Hold up though, I got some water in my lens. All right, at this point, I don't really like the angle that my camera's at. The sun is rising on this side here, so it's causing this probably whole next 30 docks to be totally blown out. So I'm gonna get the big engine and we're gonna run over there and come back this way to get you guys some better angle. Cause I am most comfortable skipping docks going, uh, I guess it would be clockwise around lakes. I'll do it the other way just for you guys. Gosh. There's a big one. My second dock on the other side. Holy cow. Holy cow. What an absolute chunker. Jeez Louise. That one's going on the scale. Yes, sir. Good grief. I just, I'm so in awe of how beautiful these fish are. Just so thick and juicy. Now there's something I want to talk to you guys about this second, this other half of the lake here. That's way, way different. Let's get this boy on the scale. 286, almost a three pounder. Thank you, buddy. So this side of the lake, I can already tell is way, way cleaner. Maybe the wind we had pushed a bunch of algae onto that side, but it is shallower over here and clearer. So my black and blue jig might not be the best option, but honestly, it might not even matter because that fish ate it in super clear, shallow water. So we're gonna keep skipping this one. I tell you what though, guys, with how shallow and calm and clear this water is, I'm gonna go back to my roots and throw a bait that I haven't thrown in years and that is a weightless fluke under docks. I've been so enamored by the jig, I forgot about the fluke. But the fluke is absolutely a fish catcher, so let's give it a shot. And I think I've decided on a little bit of a belly weight instead of totally weightless. Just because a weightless soft plastic jerk bait can be a little bit tough 
to accurately get a short skip under a dock with, so I'll give it a little bit of weight. All right, Operation Fluke begins now. Oh, and it skips like a dream. How about that? Oh, I skipped so stinking good. Gosh, there's one. Hey, first fish on it. Tiny though, not what I'm looking for. There's one. Okay, well, that's, that's two fish, but they're both half scoops. And I just kind of doubt that the last two docks I've fished didn't have a bigger one. Maybe the soft jerk bait is a, a numbers bait, not a size bait. I'm gonna keep trying though, not giving up. Let me tell you something though, it skips like a nice dream. Oh, there's one, man, another small one. A rock bass, not even a large mouth. There's one. There's one on the on the caffeine shad. That's better quality. Okay. All right. Stop it. Stop it. I gotta make a video on that. Grabbing a fish like this, that's their pressure point. So when you grab them they're hard, they can't move. Let's keep giving this thing a try. Oh, we are coming up to a absolute mega dock. Gotta put my hood up though. My neck's gonna get some burn. Oh gee, what a cast. Alright. I don't think I'm feeling this anymore. I keep catching too many small ones and rock bass. Just wasting my time. Back to the jig. Tried and true big fish catcher. There's one. Yes, sir. Gosh, you're fighting back so stinking hard. Oh, man. Not a giant, but just a nice one. Just a nice big old thick girl. Holy cow. This one might go three pounds and she's like... 15 inches, 16 inches. That's insane how fat these little bellies are. If you wonder if the cage fighter jig works and gets bigger bites, I just fished the entire stinking line of docks over here. Seven or eight of them with the fluke, nothing but small ones and rock bass. And then a few docks in with the jig, I get this one. Let's go. Man, absolutely on fire today. I am caliente. I am prideful. Oh, gee, jeepers, creepers. That guy took me down below the ground right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. You felt so stinking big <laughs> when I set the hook. You just had your head turned. Now, one thing I'm incredibly proud of in this video is the fact that I haven't changed my jig one time. I've been using the same jig the entire day and all day yesterday as well. I probably caught 30 to 40 fish on this thing. What you get with the Cage Fighter jig is a high quality premium product. It is not a cheap jig. This thing is meant to withstand uh, a heck of a lot of fish. It's still kicking today. What do we got here? What you gotta say? Are there bass under your dock? Really? I don't know if I believe you. Oh, I misunderstood you. You said there's no bass. Got it, cool. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get in here. Get in here. Yes. Got him. Kind of got the curse of the pound and three quarter fish right now. I want some, I want some mucho grandes. We've got two fours right now in our limit and one three. And I got a backlash currently. That's a fish. Gosh. Oh my gosh. That's a nice one too. I saw my line just running into the dock and so I was like, you know what? I'm not good with a backwards hook set, but I'll give it a try this time because I know he's there and running. Beautiful. Again though, not a giant, two pounder. Oh, just hooked where you want him to be hooked though. Right there in the little soft section behind the jaw. Mm, not getting off ever. And a huge way y'all can support the channel is by picking up some jigs down below using those links. It supports Outcast Tackle, who's a sponsor of mine, and it supports my affiliate income from Tackle Warehouse. So I'd really appreciate that if you guys could help out the channel in that way. This is gonna be a fish right there. Power pull down, because I'm so confident. I told you. There we go. And how did I know there was gonna be a fish there? Well, I talked about that in how to skip docks and actually earlier on in this video as well. I looked for the nastiest, thickest stuff and especially chains. If you got chains in the water, 
I know that Christ Jesus makes us free from chains, but the bass are never free. There's one. Yes, sir. Swimming out with it from the dock. That was cool. Not hooked very well, though. But as long as you keep tension on a fish and don't give them slack, that's why you can't, if you're fighting a fish in, it's, it's true for bait casters, spinning rods, shallow deep, whatever, and you're going up and then giving them slack and then going up and then giving them slack, that's not the way to fight. You set the hook hard and then reel and keep tension. And as long as you do that, even if a fish is, you know, barely hooked, the only way it gets off is by jumping. There's one. Come on, get off of there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get out of here. Once again, the curse continues. No giants on this whole stretch. Oh, but just right where you want them hooked, you know? Top of the mouth, boom. Hard cartilage, love it. Oh yeah, gosh. Get in here, get in here. Same place, every time. God. I'm in love with this lake, man, this is fun. There's one. One thing I do when I'm underneath a pontoon is that instead of doing a slack line hook set where you drop and set the hook hard, I just do a pole hook set. That way, if the fish has got it, like this one does right here, got it good, you don't have to worry about, you know, getting the hook in there. And if they don't have it good, you're not going to yank it out of the water and just completely nail their boat. If y'all want to check out the shirt, the shirt that I'm wearing today is the AFCO, hold up. It don't matter what shirt I'm wearing when I catch a big one. <laughs> My gosh, that's the second fish on this dock. It's gotta be bigger. It's gotta be bigger. Yeah, it's fighting really stinking hard. It's a nice one. It's it's a nice one. It's my probably my third biggest of the day. And getting the boat, yes sir. Love it. Ho oh, ho what a chunker. Chunker do. I never hold the fish this way for you guys. You always see it that way. There we go. Beautiful fish. Jig. Top of the mouth. I live for this kind of stuff, man. 332. Three and a third pounder. See ya. Before I was so rudely interrupted, I was telling you guys about my AFCO shirt. This is the new Adapt Phase Change. It is a long sleeve performance shirt, SPF 50, hood, buff, and it's got whatever their newest, you know, cooling moisture wicking technology. It is a really, really high quality sun shirt. As you guys know, I never wear any other shirts besides sun shirts when I'm fishing. Wearing a good sun shirt is important if you're on the water at all, really. I mean, we can all get skin cancer, and so the best thing you can do to protect your body is to wear a shirt like this. And you can use code TRF2022 to save yourself 15% on your order. So what's not to love? So we've made our way back to the dock that we uh, kind of stopped at to get ourselves a better sun angle. And it is already way more dirty water. The algae bloom is back. So I guess the wind does have an effect on this lake here. And so maybe, the bigger fish, you know, as I've gotten closer this way, the fish have actually gotten bigger in size. So maybe the bigger fish are on this side of the lake or they're on this side because of the algae bloom. Maybe there's better cover over here. Maybe there's more uh, bait fish or something. I don't know the exact reasoning. All I know is that the bites have gotten bigger. So if I was to come back here in a tournament, of course I wouldn't have hooked this many of the fish, but I would focus on this part of the lake. Yeah, there we go. That's another good one. Not big, but I would focus on this part because the quality seems to be a little bit better. So maybe fish these docks again, but also fish the grass line farther out. That's what I'd focus on, because I got a big brain. Time to head across the lake to fish our last one third. We're getting there, folks. And now that I'm back on this side, the really clear water has returned. So we're gonna see if the quality goes down as water clarity goes up. Usually when water's really clear, that's where the big ones are, but maybe this lake's different. Lame, small. Man, I'm getting spoiled. Those fish are disappointments. Gosh, there's one. There's one. Not a big one. It's still so much fun. Oh my gosh. You got any buddies in there? Let me fix my jig here. That's a practical tip. After you catch a jig fish, fix your skirt. Because sometimes your skirt will be all kinds of bedhead. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There's one. Yes, sir. Boom. That right there is what you call single scoop. Now, something's interesting about these docks right here is that they kind of 
feed into a little pocket. It's obviously shallow because the grass is matted up here. The, uh, the coontail is matted up. And so I probably will not have a whole lot of success on these docks just because there's so much cover around. And if I do, I don't think it's gonna be on the jig. So I'm gonna put the jig down. I'm gonna pick the frog up and really focus on and frogging these docks. I can't even get close to this dock. It's, it's so thick. Yeah, this stretch here is where I'm gonna finally get my frog. Oh yeah. Oh, I've got one. Oh my gosh. I had one from the beginning of the cast. A little squirt, but I'll take him. Frogfish, success. Gosh, there we go. Got a nice little skip underneath the pontoon in between the middle of the pontoon and the outside. Got us one. Couldn't even see the bite, just heard the sploosh. That's fun. That's really stinking fun. And now we're into this flat here of grass and it's just, I mean, that dock's gonna be so shallow. So are those two. Not feeling good about these. So we kind of ran out of docks in this little pocket here and it got way too shallow to even troll over there. So we're gonna frog our way out and get to the last few docks on this lake. My back is starting to hurt. I gotta stretch. Gosh, there's one. There's one on the frog, on the frog, power pull down. You nicer? Maybe, not too much nicer, but a chunky one, beautiful. Again, I switched to the frog on these docks because it is so weedy under there that a jig just wouldn't be effective. I couldn't keep the jig out of the weeds, but a frog, you can. How about that? Now, I really doubt that I could get a second one out of there, but. Gosh, oh my goodness gracious. What a stinking aggressive fish. I did not think I would get another one out of that dock after just dragging one through, but I, I guess you can cause a little bit of commotion and look at how much he ate that frog by. Frog is ribbit ribbit gone. He was not getting off. And look at that, he's got some kind of scar on his side from probably a pike or a muskie. Oh, shoot. Got him. Yes, sir. He came back for it. <laughs> That's what I like to see. An aggressive frog eater. Yum, 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 yum. I apologize if you had named that one. So as we fish our final dock of this lake, there's a lot that I've learned. The first thing I learned and really was just confirmed to me, I already knew it, was that the jig is the big fish getter. Even though this is no bigger in size than a creature bait, it's even smaller than most worms, it absolutely triggers a bigger sized bite. Almost all the big fish I catch basically all year round are on a jig and especially in shallow cover around docks, the jig is the way to go. Learn how to skip a stinking jig and you'll catch bigger bass. The second thing I learned is to never judge a book by its cover. In this instance, never judge a lake by the way it looks visually. When I showed up on this lake and started working some docks at the beginning, I was kind of put off by the fact that there was an algae bloom. I was concerned about it. I thought maybe the fish aren't going to bite as well. They can't see my lure as good. And in my experience, usually you want the clearest water possible when it comes to docks. But today I learned that's not always true. The bigger fish and more fish I caught were in the dirtier water. So if you show up to a body of water and it doesn't look like how you thought it would, do not get discouraged. There are still fish biting somewhere. You just gotta figure out where and how. And the one thing that I hope you guys learned while watching this video is that making accurate and long skips is incredibly important to catching fish under docks. And if you wanna see a video where I went deep into teaching you guys how to skip lures, just like I was skipping the jig today, I will leave that video up here in this corner. By watching that video, you guys are gonna become better at skipping lures and catching more fish. My name's Tyler, as always, it's a pleasure, and we'll see you next time right here on TRF.